So what does it actually take to bring in $10 million from a funnel? Well, today on Legacy Builders, we're gonna dive into one of our most successful eight-figure funnels and brands cash flow tactics. I wanna share with you exactly how we did it, what the funnels were, how the funnel worked, what the offers were, so that you can actually model success and put it into play for your business. Let's dive in. Hey everybody, welcome back to Legacy Builders with Brian Delaney. Brian, you tell these stories about some of the successes that you've had with clients and some of these, you know, over $20 million funnels, uh, over, you know, five to 10, you know, $10 million funnels. Like you have these stories today. I want to go deep into kind of some of the mechanics of one of them. And so you've, you've talked about cash flow tactics, you know, they went from zero to 10 million in seven months. Yeah. Everybody hears that and they think, Oh, awesome. If I just like, do these three things, then I'll get $10 million in seven months. Break down this funnel for our audience so that we can really understand how did the funnel work? Um, what were some of the things that set it apart from others? And like, let's really get into some of the mechanics of, of this funnel. And then we'll, we'll talk about another one as well. Yeah, that's great. That's great, Seth. So I think, yeah, I think what's most important is that, you know, we met, I sat down with these guys for a full day for eight hours and we mapped out their seven to eight figure plan. Right. And I always say this, you know, it's, if you're going to build a dream house or any house for that matter, you, you'd probably hire an architect. Right. But that's not what most of the market does. Most of the market's just throwing mud up against the wall, copying someone else's stuff and, and wondering why it's not working. Okay. Well, that's a recipe for disaster. Okay. We sat down and strategically thought through okay, what are we going to send out to the marketplace? What are we going to use as our acquisition strategy? Well, in their case, we used a webinar because webinars are one of the greatest ways to sell expertise, right? Because you have 60 to 90 minutes with people where you get to tell stories and you get to convince them around your vehicle to helping them get where they want to go. In, this, in these guys' examples, it was about how to uh, retire, basically become financially free in 10 years or less, regardless of your age, income, or experience. And so some of the components that are really important here is that before we launched this webinar, we also built them a, a new brand where we could you know, make them look the part, right? We built a new website. That was a core component as well. Then we hosted a webinar, right? And I think the most important thing to talk about is when you look at that campaign, it's all about who, what's the audience we're serving. Now, in their case, we serve people who have jobs, right? And they serve people who have jobs. So we serve ads to people who are in a career who want to retire and who aspire to retire, become financially independent. What, what In our case, or in their case, really, it's in 10 years or less, right? And so that's the hook. And so you really got to figure out what is your campaign narrative? What is your hook? What's the, what are the words that you can send out to your marketplace that's going to get their attention, that's going to resonate with them, and that it's going to stop them in the tracks, right? Because we use Facebook ads, we use Instagram ads primarily in that first period of time where we did over $10 million. That's all we used. Now, we spent $150,000 in, in Facebook and Instagram ads, okay? So you should know that, but I don't know about you, but one hundred and fifty. dollars thousand in ads over 10 million in revenue. That's a really good outcome, right? Not common, not typical, but that's the reality that they have, that they found themselves in. Now they've done, you know, over $50 million in revenue and are the category king in the financial services industry. The next component that's really important to talk about here is what's your acquisition funnel, right? So for them, it's a webinar where they can educate, inspire, and persuade to go deeper over the course of 60 to 90 minutes. If all that they had was that, they would never have made 10 million in six months, or seven months, sorry, seven months. They would have never made 10 million in seven months if it wasn't, if that's all they had, right? And I remember one time I had a guy who asked, who asked for some consulting, and he's a big influencer on YouTube. And he said, Brian, I'm thinking about launching a course. And I have two different concepts. And I said, okay, cool. Which one do you have more results for people? And he said, okay, this one. I said, great. I said, what else are you selling? 
He said, nothing. What do you mean when I was from Messiah? I just want to sell a course. I said, do you not care about people? I said, you're crazy to only sell a course. He's like, what do you mean? I said, you're, you're not doing them a service by only selling them information without anything deeper. The reality is people, people need deeper levels of work with you. That's where workshops and certifications and coaching and consulting and agency come into play. And now you can take your front end customer in this case from $500 on the front end, 497 to be exact, to then being able to invest 10,000 or 12,500 into a mastermind because that was the initial upsell. The initial upsell was, Brian, we want to fill our mastermind with 100 people. We ended up doing that in four months. And they said, stop everything. We can't have any more people come into the mastermind, right? Which was funny to me because they thought it was going to take a year to fill the mastermind. In reality, it only took four months. With the right front-end narrative, with the right webinar stories, and with the right webinar offer, they were able to fill their mastermind within four months. Okay? So those are the major components. And then the, the mastermind sale was about how to get cash flow coming in in 90 days or less. Right? So think about that for a second. Think about that campaign from a high level. Okay? And sometimes it's helpful to look from a high level. I call it looking from a stealth bomber perspective, right? 50,000 foot up, looking down. What are the components that they had that made them successful? Well, they had their brand, cash flow tactics. They had their website that people can go and validate their, before they make an investment. They could look at their results that they have for others, right? They could look at their programs and their offers. They could go look at their blog posts. They could go, they could go investigate, right? So those are two major components, a brand that stands out, that's better, different, and unique than anyone in that marketplace. Okay. In your case, in your marketplace, and then a website that people can go and visit to learn more about what you do. One major page that you should have on your website is a reviews page and showcase all the results that you're able to help other people produce. Because remember, people are looking at the mountain of evidence that you have helped others produce. It's fine and dandy that you have great results for yourself, but that's not enough these days. You need to help other people produce similar, like, or better results, right? And I say that all the time because it's that important. Now, what are the other components? Well, they had their webinar. Then they had a thank you page webinar, which was like a 20 or 30 minute webinar after they bought the first program for $497. Now, let me ask you a question. When is the best time to make another offer? Well, typically it's while they're checking out, going through the checkout process. Think about when you go to the grocery store, right? You go for milk and bread and eggs maybe, maybe some bacon. <laughs> but before you know it, the whole thing's full because you found all the stuff that you wanted, right? Well, the same applies here in the expert business, right? But look at this example. Their front end message, their narrative was about retiring in 10 years or less. Their back end narrative was about getting cash flow coming in in the next 90 days or less without dealing with termites, toilets, and tenants. And I called that autopilot assets, the term that I called, I coined with them while we were working in a content, what I call a content workshop, where we're, we're heads down, creatively uh, co-creating over the course of three days, where we build out webinars, we build out challenges, we build out offers, and we build out how we're going to sell those offers, right? We created the term autopilot assets because it makes people say, what is that, right? And you're going to want the same components at play for you, right? You're going to want to use, create your own terminology. You're going to want to create your own tribe. Their tribe is Empire Builders that we launched when we first started, right? Empire Builders. Ours is Legacy Builders. What is yours, right? What is the identity that you're helping people step into and, and embrace? Okay, these are all really important components that allowed these guys to do 10 million in seven months. Now, mind you, prior to coming to work with us, my team and I, these guys tried this, that, and the next thing, and everything failed to the point where they were about to throw in the towel. They were about to call it quits. They're about to go back to referral-based only marketing because that's the only thing that they had in their experience of life and business that worked. Thankfully, they didn't give up. 
Thankfully, they didn't give in. Maybe you're going through a, a situation or experience like that right now where you've tried something and it's not working like you've planned. Keep going. Get back up. Move forward. If these guys wouldn't have moved forward and continued, they would not have impacted thousands of families across the country to become financially free in 10 years or less. They would have not bought the intellectual property of a guy in their, in their industry who was ready to retire. They would have never been in a position to do that if they hadn't launched their expertise. They would have never been in a position to be on stage in front of 20,000 people at Grant Cardone's 10X. They would have never been in a position to get in front of 5,000 people in front of Funnel Hacking Live twice if it wasn't for the success that they've had. So if you're going through a situation where you launched something and it wasn't successful, dust yourself off, get back up, and try again. That's what it takes as an entrepreneur. Okay, I can't tell you how many things I tried in the, in my past, especially when I first started, because I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know what I didn't know, right? And I didn't have a team. But if I, but I had to get back up. I had to push forward. I had to press in. I had to regroup. And there's going to be times when you have to do that too. Okay, welcome to life, and welcome to business. Right? People talk about this entrepreneurial roller coaster. Well, that's it, right? There's, there's low times and there's high times, right? You're typically going to have more high times the more experience you have and the better your team is. Because, like I said before, if, they, if these guys, Cashflow Tactics, Ryan and Brad, would have tried to do it all themselves, they would have fit, continued to fail miserably. It wasn't until they identified their who, who was in their corner, and that happened to be my team and I to really help them bring a unique message to the market in a powerful way that gripped their audience and pulled them into their world that allowed them to inspire them and to awaken them to this concept of being able to retire in 10 years or less because a lot of people don't even realize that's possible, right? So these are some of the major components. Yes, there is a lot of components, right? It's not just one thing typically, right? But if you look at a high level, what did they do? They launched a webinar, they sold a course, and then they offered a mastermind. Yeah. There are tons of people trying to do that. Yeah, I think it's important that you understand some of these components that, that, that are within it because they matter. Right. Well, and, you know, we hear 10 million in seven months, and that sounds awesome, and that sounds really fast. But a lot of people after week one, they're expecting 10 million. You know, I, you mentioned they spent $150,000. They were doing, you know, webinars for several months. Um, it, talk to the patience aspect of it where, you know, it's mm -hmm. not like they came and they did the strategy day with you. You built out the, you know, the coaching, the offers, the ads, all that stuff. And then they still had to be patient past that week one. They didn't make $10 million on week one, yep. right? Well, no, no. And actually they broke even on week one. <laughs> so they spent 5,000 bucks on a webinar and they made $5,000 in $497 course sales. And a lot of people would say, stop everything. It's broken. It's not working. I can't scale it. Right. But their mindset, because they had already, they were in the industry long enough. We were together in Russell Brunson's highest level mastermind. They already realized, thankfully, a, what a break even funnel is. And so they already were coming with the mindset of Brian, if we can just break even here, we can spend 500 bucks and make 500 bucks. We will be stoked. We will be screaming to the rooftops about, about you and about your services and about your team. And that's what they do now because that's what happened. That was the reality. And a lot of people think that, you know, I'm going to spend five grand on a webinar. I'm going to make a million bucks. And the reality is, is that that's possible but it's typically not going to be possible from a front end offer ever. It's always going to be the combination of your front end and your back end offers, as is the case with them, as is the case with me, and as is the case with every one of our partners that have scaled beyond $10 million in revenue. It's never from just a front end offer. In fact, their mindset, which is a really good mindset to adopt, is that my front end is, to break, is, is, is going to pay for all my advertising. Okay. Nothing else. Just look at it from that perspective. If you look at it through that lens, you'll be more successful than other people because other people will take themselves out of the game before they're ever able to see that success.
because they quit too early. Unfortunately, that's what people do, right? Because they think I'm going to spend five grand and I'm going to, I need to make 20 or I need to make 50 or I need to make a hundred. Well, let's consider your competitors for a second. What if your competitors spend five grand and all that, they don't even need, even need to make five grand. They can break, they can lose money on the front end. Who's able to withstand that storm longer? Uh, it's them, right? Because they have a, they, they understand a lot, the lifetime value of a customer and they can wait it out, right? They can wait, wait for the boomerang to come back, if you will, right? So put yourself up, you know, set yourself up for, for success, right? Your front end is to break even or double your ad spend at best. If you're doing anything more than that, you're crushing it and you should scale it as fast as humanly possible. Now, the case with these guys is that they filled their mastermind. They had to stop everything because they went from a front end break even to nothing. We actually went back in because we, be, we became, we, we had a profit partnership at that time. We went back in and built out a whole new advanced course with them for free because that's what we do when we're profit partnerships. In our profit partnerships, we contribute back to the prop, to the partnership. And so we went back and spent a whole week developing out a new program, an advanced program for 2000 bucks, where people could come in from the webinar to the course for 497 We would break even, and then they would ascend from there and enroll into the advanced program for 2000 bucks. Okay? So sometimes you have to do that, right? As your it, optimization is a normal part of business, right? Or the principle of Kaizen, right? Constant improvement. You really need to adopt that philosophy that the Japanese instituted in Toyota, which is why Toyota became the brand that it is, is because of that Japanese philosophy. Take that philosophy, borrow that philosophy, and integrate that philosophy with your everyday way of being and thinking, that's how you have to think when it comes to this expert business, right? You've got to constantly be improving. You've got to be constantly trying new things. You've got to be constantly optimizing your campaigns. That's your ads. That's your funnels. That's everything, okay? The last thing you want to do is get complacent and, get, and, get, um, and move on to the next shiny object. And that's another thing that a lot of people do, right? They have one thing that crushes it out of the park, and then they get bored and they want to start up a new thing. Okay, that's a disaster waiting to happen. Okay, once you find something that works, scale that puppy to the right. moon and serve as many people as you humanly possibly can. How much do you think, like, if if somebody's listening and they're like, okay, I have this much to spend on ads. Like, let's not talk about the team and, you know, hiring support and different things. But um, I think yeah. there's a lot of people that they, you know, they have $10,000 in the bank or they have $1,000 in the bank and their mindset is, okay, cool, I can you know, spend a thousand dollars in Facebook ads and then I'll get $5,000 in courses and then I can spend that. They can like keep flipping this, this money yep. from a mindset perspective. Is there a number that people should be expecting to like spend on a successful, you know, funnel and going through optimizing that funnel, going through the ups and downs of that funnel? Mm -hmm. Yep. I, so I would say I, I typically, my, my clients, my partnerships, uh, they typically spend between five to ten thousand per webinar or per challenge, and then, then they do another one. Then they do another one. Then they do another one. Right? They get better. Right? My first webinar I ever did was back in two thousand ten. We did two webinars a week, just so we can get better and better and better and better and better. And literally, we did that every week for the entire year. So think about that. It's over a hundred webinars, and we got better every time. Right? Um, now we didn't spend 5,000 bucks per webinar because the person that I helped to launch that webinar didn't have that type of resources. So he had to get creative. He had to go out and find affiliates, which might be what you need to do if you don't have the money to do proper testing, right? But when you think about launching a webinar, you should be, you should think no less than five grand. Okay. You should put 5,000 bucks into a webinar and then you should get that data back. Okay. That data that you're getting back is going to tell you how, is going to tell you how the, the adjustments you need to make for the next one. Then you invest the next 5,000 bucks into the next webinar and you get more data back. And that's really, I mean, you've got to go through that like five to 10 times before you actually get something that you can scale in some cases. Now, in other cases, like the one I shared today, I mean, they were successful right out of the gate. Spend five, make five. 
right? But that they were already in that mindset of breaking even. And that was smart on their part because they look back and they realized that out of their first thousand customers, they had made over $18 million from those th- from one, only 1,000 paid front end customers. That's insane, right? They make 18,000 bucks per person, right? So how much, think about it, how much would you spend to acquire a buyer who's going to pay you 18 grand? I would at least spend 500 bucks, right? Shoot, I'd spend two or three grand all day right. long to get an $18,000 customer. But most people don't think that way because what that, that because that would require them to to lose on the front end. And most people are just not wired to lose for very long without seeing a profit or 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 you know sticking around long enough to be able to ascend the customers into the the back end right. offers, right? Which is critical. Yeah. Right? And I mean one of the the things that I hear you saying over and over is is it's the mindset piece like you really have to have the right mindset going in and uh, you and I both know so many people that they want to launch an online course because they want to make money without having to serve anybody. They don't want to actually do the work of helping people. Right. They just want to be able to say like, oh yeah, cool. I, you know, sit back and watch TV all day and I'm selling online courses with an automated webinar. And, uh, right. And if I say, if that's you, like, don't even get in the industry, don't even waste your time, energy, effort, money, resources, because you're going to get smoked out by everyone who actually cares about mm-hmm. service. So don't even start if that's your mindset. If your mindset is like laptop riches, you're going to sit back and chill on the beach, sip margaritas, and you're going to just print print money and not serve, don't even start. Yeah. Because you're going to get blown out of the water by your competitors who care about their audience. And the lifetime value of their customer goes beyond a couple months. They're thinking years into the future. Right? So you, you've got to really do, you've got to really think that way. Otherwise, you shouldn't even get into the business. Right, because this business is driven by impact. This business is driven by changing people's lives in some way, shape, or form, whether it's health, finances, relationships, whatever it might be. But it's about changing people's lives, helping helping people. If you don't have that core value, then you might want to rethink getting into it at all. But I would say, you know, if you're going to do webinars, I would say have at least twenty thousand bucks at least to test at least four webinars, so you can run a webinar. And improve the next one, run another webinar, improve the next one, run another webinar, improve the next one. You got to at least be able to do four of them to get the right, to get, to get enough data to make the adjustments that you need to then scale it, right? Sometimes it could be price point. Sometimes it could be the offer. Sometimes it can be the way that you're showing up throughout that webinar experience. There are a number of things that you need to be improving on. I find myself coaching my partnerships and clients a lot on the offer component, price point component, and most importantly, the delivery of the stories and of the offer. That's where a lot of people mess up, is not knowing how to communicate properly to get people excited and to move people forward. That's a huge one. I'm constantly, out of a webinar, I usually have 10 or 20 different uh, you know, items for feedback for people of how you can make this better. As I listen to it, I go through it and I take notes and I I give critical feedback that needs to be made in order to be better, right? And if you're not willing to go through that process of optimization and, and, and fine-tuning how you show up and your way of being and how you communicate, then that's another red flag. I would say I would caution you to getting into this business because these are things that are required, yeah, man, shoot, you should look at the stuff. The stuff I recorded back in the day is horrendous. I had braces and a, bu- a buzzed head, and I was, you know, in my, in my mid-20s, and, and I wasn't, I wasn't, it was, it was, it was horrendous. It was terrible, but I got better, right? So if you, you've got to have this mindset of, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get better. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get better. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get better. And eventually you'll be great. But in the beginning, you're probably going to suck. I love what Garrett White says. Garrett says, in the beginning, you're going to suck, and then you're going to suck. A little, a little less, and then eventually you're, you're not going to suck at all. <laughs> it eventually will be great, right? But typically, when you start anything, you're not great at it. Think about when you start riding a bike, right? You probably fell over a, a few times. I know I fell over a few times in the beginning. Almost took out mailboxes and smashed into cars. <laughs> but I kept doing. I kept. I kept. I kept getting back up. I kept trying, and that's right. what you have to do in this business. You have to get back up and keep trying. 
And the reality is, is if you have a thousand bucks and that's all you have, or five, even just 5,000 bucks to spend on a webinar, then you probably should reconsider even getting into the business in the first place, or you should rethink your strategy on how you're going to raise money to be able to fuel it. Because the reality is Facebook costs money. Instagram costs money. TikTok costs money. YouTube costs money. Unless you just want to get on there and build an audience, which you can, it's just going to take you a lot longer. There's nothing wrong with that. I've, we've built audiences into the millions of people in, in, in verticals that you can't even advertise. It just takes a lot longer and you got to have a lot of patience. You got to be able to withstand that, work, being able to work and not see a return. Most people are not willing to work and not see a return on their investment within a few months, let alone a few years. And so if you're in that situation and all you can do is free stuff because you don't have a budget, just understand that you've got to keep planting every single day, planting and planting and planting and planting and watering and nurturing those, those seeds that you're putting out into the marketplace because you don't have an ad budget to force your message right. into the market. Yeah, I need that's the beautiful thing about ads, in my opinion. I mean, if you can't run ads, you don't have a business. You, you can, you got to be able to flip the switch on or flip the switch off, and that's what ads allow right. you to do. Yeah, and I think people need to realize there's times where you can focus more on serving your audience, getting results, saving cash, and then there's times to scale. Yep. Um, and you got to know what yep. season you're in. So 100%. this has been a great kind of eight figure funnel deep dive. Uh, we're going to keep doing these, and we're going to keep doing these for some of the other eight fun funnel eight figure funnel that funnels that you've been a part of. Um, the next one we're going to dive into is, uh, similar, you know, zero to 10 million in six months. Um, you're going to see some, uh, commonalities between the mindset of how, how you have to think to approach things like this, but this has been really good, Brian. Thanks so much for, uh, sharing kind of the mechanics of how these funnels work. Thank you for joining me on legacy builders. And I would encourage you to come back to the next episode next week to get more clarity on your journey to launch your expertise online, scale your impact, and build your legacy. If you're ready to get the process started of launching your expertise online the right way, then I recommend go to launchexpertise.com or maybe you're at a place where you're ready to really scale your expertise and your impact. Go to launchexpertise.com. There you'll have several options. Number one, you can get a free copy of my brand new book, The Entrepreneur Evangelist, which I share the secrets that have unlocked more than $300 million of results for my clients and partners in our own campaigns. You could also join a 33 days of coaching with me uh, that's free, where I give you insights and wisdom on your journey to launching your expertise and scaling your impact over the course of 33 days. And that's worth at least 5,000 bucks, but for right now, you can get it for free. And lastly, if you're someone who wants to take the absolute faster, smarter path when it comes to launching your expertise online and scaling your impact, I'd recommend scheduling a call with my team where we can see how we can support you to crush goals and generate seven or eight figures yourself in a short period of time. We have more awards than nearly anyone in the entire community and for good reason. We would love to help you just like we've helped them. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Legacy Builders.